Welcome to episode 15 of Ask the Grounding Experts, where our experts from ENS Grounding Solutions answer your engineering questions about the world of grounding and earthing. In today's episode, ENS President David Stocken kicks off a two-part series tackling the question, what happens when lightning strikes a tower? You may find the answer, uh, enlightening? Take it away, David. Well, that's a great question. There's a number of different electrical phenomena that occurs when lightning strikes an object. And, and one of the easiest things to think about is a tower, your standard old lattice tower. What occurs when lightning strikes it as uh, in our electrical phenomena? What are the electrical phenomena that are going to occur? Um, in our classes, we of course would draw this out. We'd have an electronic whiteboard and we would show you all these things in detail. Uh, so you're gonna, for those of you that are watching on YouTube, we'll splash up a few images for you there uh, to look at. If you're listening to podcasts, you're gonna have to put your imagination cap on a little bit and try to follow through with me here. So imagine a lonely lightning uh, 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 lattice tower sitting out in the middle of an open field somewhere, and lightning comes along and dun 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 strikes the tower. So what happens when that lightning comes in? So lightning is a very powerful electrical phenomena, and it when it occurs, you get a massive amount of current. Somewhere between typically between anywhere as low as 10,000 amps up to as high as several hundreds of thousands of amps. In fact, recently in India, they recorded a 1.8 billion, with a B, volt uh, strike from a, a single lightning strike. Uh, we have satellites in orbit, they can measure these things. It's uh, uh, very interesting uh, stuff. We can talk about some of those details in another video down the road if everybody likes. But what happens when this comes in, let's just say for uh, ease of example, let's say 100,000 amps comes, strikes our metal tower. Now our metal tower is made of steel. And we like to think of steel as being conductive. But in reality, it's really not very conductive. So copper, just as a comparison point, Copper is somewhere between 12 to 17 times more conductive in a pure resistance uh, than uh, uh, steel is. So if you have a DC current, you'll get 12 to 17 times more current traveling down an equivalent size piece of copper as you would an equivalent size piece of steel. Now when you get to AC, alternating current, you start getting into magnetics and, and permeability. And what happens is we see that the steel is uh, copper somewhere between 250 to 6,000 times less magnetic than the steel is. So because steel has to form these magnetic fields, they have to form and it takes time to collapse, that generates an impedance. So a good rule of thumb is that steel is only somewhere between 3 to 12% as effective as an equivalent piece of copper in conducting electricity. And in fact, copper is what we call diamagnetic. It actually helps to collapse magnetic fields. We'll get back to that in a minute. So our lightning strikes our tower and 100,000 amps enters it and it enters it quickly, faster than you can blink your, your eye. Something like 1.2 microseconds, you get 100,000 amps just immediately enters into this tower. And it's going to start traveling down this lattice tower, and a number of things start occurring as it's traveling down. First of all, these magnetic fields have to form, and those take time to form, and then they will collapse back down on each other. But the current will travel down the tower and it's going to hit the footing of the tower and that footing is going to be extended down into the earth and in this case let's imagine a four legged uh, lattice tower so you have four footings in there and each one of those represents an electrode it's a connection to the earth and that electricity is going to come down the steel hit the rebar in the concrete footing travel down the steel in the rebar footing out through the concrete and then into the earth. And what that current, as it enters into the earth, we call that leakage current. But any given, one given footing can only handle so much leakage current 
per a given unit of time, and that happens to be in seconds. So if you, we'll use some very loose examples here. Um, if we said that those electrodes can handle 10,000 amps per second, if we have 100,000 amps that comes in in a fraction of a second, it's going to take at least 10 seconds to get rid of all that current. So what happens is the current comes down the tower and it hits the footing and 10,000 amps leaks out and it bounces back up and it comes back down and some more leaks out and it keeps bouncing up and down inside of that tower bouncing around until all of it can finally leak out into the surrounding soil. This is what we call frequency spectrum and this frequency that's going to resonate inside of this tower is based on the size of the tower. The taller the tower, the lower the frequency, the shorter the tower, the higher the frequency. Now we can actually figure this out, we can actually calculate it. It's in electrical engineering we would call it the half wavelength theory of a, for an antenna. We can actually go in and measure the length of a, a given object and tell you what that frequency is going to be. Imagine uh, you're back in the school days uh, and you've got your bicycle and you stick your playing card in the wheel of the bicycle and every time the bicycle clicks, you, you know, you get a click from your playing card, that's one rotation of the wheel. So when you and your buddies line up at the 100 yard line, you're going to race to the end of the football field. And if you count the clicks on that 100 yards, and if you get 100 clicks, that would mean that the circumference of your wheel would have to be exactly one yard to get 100 clicks. Every time it clicked, it traveled one yard in distance, right? If you got 10 clicks on that same distance traveled, you'd have to have a very big wheel, right? Like one of those old timey uh, 1900s uh, wheels uh, where the guys rode on, on, on the big wheels. You'd have this big massive wheel because it only rotated 10 times to get all the way down 100 yards. Now if you got a thousand clicks on that you'd have a much smaller wheel if you got a million clicks you'd have like a matchbox car or something right it'd be a wheel it'd be really really tiny and that's what's happening inside of this tower it's bouncing around based on its size and we're going to get a predictable calculatable uh, frequency that it's going to resonate at and it may resonate at multiple frequencies in there you may get harmonics thirds fifths sevenths etc that bounce around in there but once you have that frequency spectrum, you can actually then uh, use that for tuned bandpass filters for your surge protection devices and figure that out. We can also get the time domain, how long it's going to resonate inside of that structure. Remember, it's amps per second. So the longer those, that amps is inside of your structure, the more damage it can do. So the quicker we can get that amps out and leak it out in the surrounding soil, the faster we, uh, or the less damage that that current has that it can, it can cause damage. And that's exactly what happens in this case. It's going to start to leak out. And it's going to saturate the, the soil as it leaks out into the surrounding soil. And you're going to get a voltage gradient across the earth. And we deal with a number of different voltage gradients. One of them is in the tower itself, all those electrons backed up waiting their turn to get out uh, of the uh, electrodes, kind of like uh, cars backed up on the freeway. Well, what happens when we have a bunch of electrons piled up in a given spot? Well, we can measure that. We call it voltage, right? So you get this ground potential rise of the metallic component of the tower, and we can measure that in voltage. And then as it leaks out into the surrounding soil, it's kind of like dropping a pebble into water. It sends a wave out across the surface of the earth. And the closer we get to that tower, the higher and higher the voltage is. It keeps getting less and less and less as it goes out. These electrons, they want to get back onto an atom. So they find the closest atom they can get into and they fill it up. And then if that one's full, they go to the next one and the next one and they just keep traveling out across the surface of the earth and through down deep into the earth and that's what we get we get leakage current and then we end up with a scalar potential across the surface of the earth some people call it a zone of influence and this is where we start getting into step and touch voltages if you're walking near 
that tower when lightning strikes or it happens to fault if it's a power line it happens to fault that electricity comes down the tower enters the earth rolls across the surface of the earth like a wave if your front foot is at a thousand volts and your back foot is at 750 volts that's a 250 volt differential and it could kill you it's called step voltages uh, you may have heard where the reindeer uh, lightning hit 400 reindeer died or cows in fact the US government estimates that something in the neighborhood of 70 percent of all accidental large animal deaths are due to lightning strikes uh, specifically step voltages people are killed by this unfortunately on a more often than you may might want to even know uh, but people die from step voltages the other voltage that can kill you is when you're if you happen to be touching this tower when this occurs the difference between your hand and your feet can be enough to kill you causes like current flows if your hands at a thousand um, volts but your feet is it are at near zero that's a thousand volt dif volt differential travel right through your heart and that causes fibrillation currents to occur and that's what we call touch voltages and that can be very dangerous as well obviously in fact more dangerous typically than step voltages are so some of these factors that we deal with in this lightning strike uh, immediately happen just because of the energy taking the time to get out of the tower and the amount of current that backs up and falls uh, backs up as it's waiting for time to get out this leakage current to get out and this rolls into some other factors that we'll talk about in our next part uh, we'll break this up into two parts here we have uh, uh, all kinds of other factors that we'll talk about in part two uh, but this connection to the earth is critical for the amount of time it takes uh, for that current to get out and what those ultimately those voltages that will form that can be hazardous to us so we'll this is probably a good spot we'll move on to part two here and we'll set up a, another video and another podcast for that for you later if you are watching this on youtube you know uh, i think we got a subscribe button and there's a like button if you could hit those things for us we'd really appreciate it leave a comment down in there we love listening to your comments go onto our website leave a comment we got a little spot for you to uh, leave some comments there too if you happen to be listening to the podcast I hope your imagination you were able to follow along with me uh, but please hit that like hit, or subscribe I guess in the case of a podcast hit that subscribe uh, let us know what you think and uh, uh, give us a suggestion for some future topics and we'd uh, love to hear from you thanks a lot everyone bye bye thanks so much for watching if you found this episode helpful please give us a quick like down below and subscribe to stay up to date on future educational videos we will be publishing. And feel free to post questions or comments below as well. We might even feature your questions in future videos. If you'd like to learn more about the amazing world of electrical engineering and grounding, be sure to check out our certified online courses at the links in the description below to kickstart your career. See you next time.